Welcome back to the Law and Crime Network, everyone. An explosive morning in the Harvey Weinstein courtroom in New York. The movie producer is facing five sex crimes charges. He infuriated the judge this morning and almost got sent straight to jail during jury selection in his own trial. Law and Crime's Jesse Weber was in the courtroom and joins us now to tell us exactly what Weinstein did wrong. Jesse, good morning. Point in time. Good morning, Aaron. Let me set the scene for you. I'm actually sitting in the front row. I was directly behind Harvey Weinstein, and I noticed that he was using two cell phones, which I thought was strange since nobody in the courtroom is allowed to use their cell phone. Before the judge entered, one of the court officers actually reprimanded Harvey Weinstein and said, put it away. The minute the judge walked into his chambers, the minute he walked into that courtroom, even before he got his robe on, he started yelling at the defense and Harvey Weinstein for using a cell phone. Said this is a repeated violation. Uh, he, uh, Harvey Weinstein tried to speak up in the middle to defend himself, and he said, sir, I encourage you to uh, invoke your right to counsel and remain silent, don't say anything more. Uh, Arthur Idala said, I don't know what happened, I just walked in, he was being yelled at, and he said to Harvey Weinstein, the judge said to Harvey Weinstein, I'm gonna ask you something, do not say anything, sir, but do you wanna spend the rest of your life in jail for using a cell phone? He made one last warning and said, Arthur Idala to him, if he does this again, if anything should happen, it's on you. Remember that. So that's how the morning started, a big blow to the defense. The next big issue, not surprising, was L.A. As you know, the L.A. indictment changed the whole story about Harvey Weinstein. And the question, of course, was, will his bail conditions be changed? Well, According to the state, they wanted him thrown in jail. So another opportunity there. They made the argument that he is a, p a potential risk, uh, basically implying that he's a flight risk. Uh, given these new charges, there's a lot stacked against him. He's a man of means. Uh, the defense said that L.A. has not issued an arrest warrant on him. Nothing has really changed. And the judge seemed to agree with the defense. He kept the same bail conditions, but once again warned Arthur Idala that if he violates, if Harvey Weinstein violates any of his conditions, there are going to be repercussions. Now, the final motion, the final argument this morning concerned the defense's attempt to try to get an adjournment, which is a postponement, a kind of cooling off period for this trial because of the L.A. indictment. Arthur Idala made, I would say, about a five to possibly eight minute speech, which I say, well, I'll tell you right now, was very well presented about why there is a significant danger for Harvey Weinstein to get a fair and impartial jury in this case. And he took out 354 pages of articles uh, that lasted over the past 18 hours and said this is all that has been presented in the last 18 hours. If you go to where the jury would be seated, look at the front page of these five local newspapers. Everybody knows about this L.A. indictment. It seems first impossible to get a fair and impartial jur jury. We need a cooling off period. And number two, the most important thing is if you don't do this, uh, it also signifies that the, the state here in New York, as well as the prosecutors in L.A., might have been conspiring with one another to do this. Uh, doesn't it seem so coincidental that he's hit with these charges on the eve of jury selection? In other words, implying that what the state is doing is to taint the jury pool to get a guilty verdict against Harvey Weinstein. This was an explosive half hour in the first morning of the Harvey Weinstein jury selection process. Pretty incredible, Aaron. Yeah, Jesse, I, I mean, this is not starting off uh, well, really, uh, for the defense. And, and look, I mean, there were fireworks yesterday as well. So as it goes to jury selection, is that process actually moving along at this point? Aaron, let me explain what's happening right now. So there are 120 prospective jurors being called in that courtroom as I speak. Most of the media had to be kicked out to make room for these prospective jurors. This is the pre-screening process. Uh, and unless, uh, y y and really they just have to make room for them. They filled out these questionnaires. They're gonna be questioned about some of this, uh, about 15 minutes I would imagine for each juror, I think 15 minutes for both sides. And then beginning January 16th is going to be the open jury selection process, the open voir dire process. I believe more members of the media will be allowed at that point. But this, again, is just for those jurors who filled out those questionnaires, and they're going to be probably questioned in one way or another about this L.A. indictment. This is a huge move uh, by L.A. We know it's going to have an effect here in the sense that can these jurors not be affected by what they just heard in the last 24 hours? It may be difficult. What did they hear? 
here, and does that change their perspective? You know, one of the comments that Arthur, Arthur Idala made is he was out to dinner last night with several of the attorneys, and a table next to him was talking about Harvey Weinstein. The judge seemed to be listening to this, but again, no sympathy for that argument, but jury selection will continue. Yeah, Jesse, I mean, of course, the defense tried to move this case to another venue. New York's a big state, not just population-wise, but geographically. And, and is, this is a common tactic for the defendant to waive his right to that local jury. Those arguments have gone absolutely nowhere, and it sounds like they are going nowhere despite these new developments within the last 24 hours. Aaron, I got to tell you, there was one moment when Donna Rotuno looked at another attorney who was actually seated in the front row of the galley uh, and basically made the face like, oh, we're not doing so good today. That was my impression of that. I mean, this has seemed to be a lot of hits to the defense in the past two days. Now, again, the prosecution didn't win uh, some of their arguments as well. They didn't win the gag order. They didn't wi win a change in uh, Harvey Weinstein's bail conditions. But at this point, I mean, again, the defense also lost yesterday, which was a significant moment. Uh, Harvey Weinstein didn't appear too happy at this. The fact that one of those controversial witnesses, the detective uh, that ultimately was resulted in that dropped charge from Lucia Evans, uh, remember he made a controversial move by not revealing uh, some some of her her, her uh, testimony or her statements that she made about being with Harvey Weinstein. Uh, ultimately, that charge was dropped due to alleged misconduct by this detective. We learned yesterday he will not be permitted to be called by the defense as a direct witness. Uh, uh, witnesses will be allowed to be cross-examined about this detective, and if it's relevant at that point, he could be called. But again, a significant blow to where the defense is going in their strategy, trying to show that this investigation and this prosecution is improper. At this point, the defense, you could argue, might have an uphill battle. Uh, yeah, it sounds like that exactly. And of course, most communication, Jesse, is nonverbal. You've given us some idea of what's happening in that courtroom. We can't see it. You can. You're there with your own eyes. How is the walker changing things? What's Weinstein's demeanor like, separate from the cell phone incident? Uh, is he acting like he's got this, that he's in charge? Is he confident? Is he nervous? Uh, give me the sense uh, of his demeanor and how that's changing the mood in the room. Well, look, Aaron, it's almost impossible to know what's going on in Harvey Weinstein's mind, but I'll tell you my observations. He did walk in today in a gray suit, uh, different than the dark suit that he was wearing yesterday. He was wheeling that walker, and he appears to be struggling. Um, there was, As he was sitting right in front of me, he was speaking with his attorney, and at several points he had his face in his hands. He was talking very quietly. When he actually did go to the defense's table, he appeared to struggle for a minute to move to transition from the walker to the chair. Again, people believe that is he faking it? Is this actually a man who's in pain or not? I don't know because here's the interesting part to remember, Aaron. The jury's not there yet. Will they even see him using the walker? How many times do we have trials where perhaps the jury doesn't see the defendant leave or enter the courtroom? Uh, I will say at this point, he doesn't appear to be in great spirits. While several of his attorneys are making uh, small jokes, they appear to be smiling, who knows what they might be smiling about. He is all serious. He knows the consequences, and he was yelled at directly by the judge today. Uh, you can imagine that using a cell phone, he's not above the law, he's not above the courtroom rules, and I think he realizes that after all the trouble with the violations with the ankle monitor, now this is another situation where he has to follow what the judge says, and he realizes the consequences are very dire because he could end up in jail. Oh, certainly. I mean, the judge has been over this time and time again, I guess we could say, and there are rules. You're following them. He has to follow them. New York courts are very restrictive when it comes to electronic devices. New York courts do not allow cameras. Sometimes they do in arraignments and sentencing, but, but in front of juries, they tend not to. And this has been litigated over and over again in New York. There have been attempts by news organizations going back more than 20 years to try to get cameras in courts so we can see some of this unfold, and they have gone absolutely nowhere. But look, uh, Weinstein, uh, perhaps there's a shift here in attitude. Maybe the yelling today actually accomplish something and you heard the judge say next time this is on you to his attorney.
That's right. He actually said to Arthur Idala, look, you're not the one going to jail, but it's on you, sir. It's on you to re remember this. Now, you mentioned a good point about the cell phones. I can't stress this enough. There are about five to six court officer, court officers who are walking around the courtroom checking to see if you're using a cell phone. You're also not permitted to tweet or email. Now, people are using their computers, but they are just taking notes. Here's what happened earlier today. I would say about a half hour ago, right before I was dismissed from, right before I left the uh, courtroom, one of the members of the media was kicked out for using her cell phone. Gotta say, pretty comical after the fact that Harvey Weinstein was just yelled at. She decided her, her phone went off and that was not good. She was uh, called out, was asked to leave the courtroom. Not sure if she'll be permitted back, but this is very serious. No one has electronic devices in there. Everybody is taking notes. The, the idea here actually before court started today was the real danger is taking photos. Uh, there was another member of the media who was seated right behind me, only he, had a, he only had a cell phone to take notes. The court officer said there's a real danger of you using a, uh, your camera. And then he actually pointed to other members of the media and said, well, every, self, every uh, computer has a camera. What are you gonna do about them? And the court officer said, what are you, they're gonna hold it up and take a picture? Obviously the idea here is there's a danger here. There's a danger to privacy, integrity of that courtroom. You can disagree about it. We cover here in long crime trials that happen all across the nation. You have ability to photograph what's happening and tweet directly. This is a different kind of courtroom, and, uh, and Judge Burke is laying down the rules. I'll tell you that much. Exactly. And, of course, Jesse, one of the reasons why the camera issue is such a serious one in this case, remember, uh, there are two primary accusers here uh, resulting in the five counts against Weinstein, and we don't even know the name of one of those accusers. So the privacy of the accusers is paramount here. This, of course, is a sex crimes case, and that changes everything when it comes to cameras, even in states that have very liberal access rules for cameras. New York, of course, is not one of them, so it's important to put it in that context as well. Law and Crimes' Jesse Weber, great reporting from the courtroom. I know you have to head back in there. When you're allowed back in, we'll check in with you as the day goes on. We will take a break here on the Law and Crime Network and be back with more live coverage in the trial of two parents in Ohio accused of killing their infants.